Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Secret MC in the 15-minute pool on ICC. And Secret MC opens with D4. Let's play... Oh, I don't know what I want to play. I'm going to play D5 in this one. And let's play a Slav family of openings. Bishop F4. What is Bishop F4? I'm not aware of that move. I think I can take on C4 against this. I mean, I also could play knight f6, but if I play knight f6, it gives him an opportunity to play e3 and thereby defend his pawn on c4. So I think capturing on c4 must be the critical move here. So I'll do that. I'm just going to check who this guy is real quick. Oh, he's only played a couple games. Um, he's played three games, and he's won them all. Uh, two 15-minute games and one three-minute game. So very, very new account. Um, e3 attacks the pawn on c4. Uh, what do I want to do? I, I mean, b5 would be the normal move here. Which I'm probably leaning towards. b5, if he undermines with a4, bishop b7, let's say. There's no obvious drawback to that. Yeah, let's go b5. Hmm. Yeah, very new account, so I mean it's it's just hard to get a read on players like that. He hasn't okay, he played a two thousand, he beat a two thousand in the standard pool. Or in the fifteen minute pool that is. Uh knight c three, I'll probably play bishop b seven against that. It seems weird to put your bishop like behind the pawn, but um I want my rook on a eight defended so that if he plays a four I can play a six in reply. So, yeah, let's do bishop b7. I'm neglecting my kingside development completely here. Okay, a4, so if I'm going to be consistent, I would play a6. Which I think I will do. I could play b4, but b4 weakens my c4 pawn. Um, if he were to play knight a2, he could virtually guarantee that he'll get it back. So, yeah, I think a6 is the move. Now bishop e2, so maybe he's going to stick his bishop on f3 to fire at the c6 pawn. I could play knight f6 and try to bring my knight to d5 to block it, but who knows how effective that will be. I think e6 would probably make more sense in this position. e6, bishop f3, bishop b4 maybe? Um... Or e6, bishop f3, queen b6, perhaps? Uh, mm, I'm a little bit loose, though, if that were to happen. e6, bishop f3, b4, maybe? Now that the bishop is not attacking c4, but then knight e4 probably gets compensation if that were to happen. I could go knight d7. Knight d7, bishop f3, b4, knight e4. At least then I'm controlling c5 a bit better. Hmm. It's just a very unusual line. c5, he's going to go bishop f3, so I don't. I'm not thrilled about that. Hmm. Couldn't even really tell you which way I'm leaning right now. It's just uh, no move I'm thinking about has a clear advantage over any other move at the moment. I'm kind of leaning towards knight d7. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if I played knight f6 or e6 too. I don't mind spending a lot of time here just because this does seem pretty important, like how I commit to my development here. It's, it's pretty clear he wants to play bishop f3, and that's a, a threat to my queenside pawns because he'll be threatening to take on b5, and b7 will be loose. Hmm. 
I'm going to play knight d7. Just going to go ahead and do it. And if bishop f3, I might play b4. I haven't made up my mind about that, but I'm seriously considering it. Yeah, because his threat, once again, will be, if bishop f3, his threat will be a takes b5. A takes b5. I can't take with the c pawn because I'm pinned. Uh, and after a takes b5, knight takes b5. And again, I'm pinned. I can't take back. Uh, not rook takes a8 first, because if rook takes a8 first, I can take with my queen or bishop. So here, that's why I'm thinking b4 might be the way to go. Yeah, let's do this move. It just kind of cuts across several of his ideas. Um, I know it weakens these pawns, though. I just think it's it's probably the best move under the circumstances, or at least the most practical move. I'm not thrilled about like holding on to my extra pawn over here, but neglecting my development entirely in order to do so. Nor would that strategy be successful, probably. So, Okay, so here I'm just thinking knight f6. And just develop, basically. Check. He took right away. Any reason to take with anything other than the knight? Probably not. But then again, he's going to likely win c4 soon. I could take with my g-pawn and then try to go e5. That might have some value. Um, knight takes would be, yeah, just normal. Knight takes, yes, queen c2, maybe knight d5. Uh, let's play knight takes. Yeah, I think this knight making its way to d5 is decent. I wonder if secret NC stands for secret Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> I think he has a flag from the Congo, though. Yeah. So. Maybe it's secret MC. Magnus himself. Adopting a Congolese flag. For identity protection. Okay, so what's going on now? I want to complete my development. I would love to play e6 and, let's say, bishop d6 and trade the dark square bishops. Um, but he's likely going to assault my pawns quickly here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him go after that c4 pawn. And that's why I'm thinking I might need to play knight d5 soon. Because if he goes after c4, let's say he plays queen c2 and I were to play just a battle move e6 and he takes on c4, he would be threatening uh, bishop takes c6 check at that point. So I think this knight d5 move could be a timely resource to block his light square bishop and also attack his dark square bishop. I wonder if he thinks the same thing. Um, if queen c2, knight d5, queen takes c4, I mean, I might... Nah, taking an f4 would not be good. He has bishop takes c6. So scratch that plan. What would I do? Queen c2... Um... Yeah, I'll probably just go like e6 and then knight d5 after he takes on c4. That's probably what I'll do. Um, c3 is interesting as well. c3, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes, knight d5. I would have. What about uh, c3, pawn takes, pawn takes, queen b3, hitting my bishop on b7? That looks more troubling, doesn't it? Looks a bit troubling. Yeah, those those bishops are killers. They're just kind of raking my position right now. I hate to have to just let him play rook take c4, but I might have to. Yeah, let's just go e6. I'm going to let him take on c4, but I'm going to try to play knight e5 and go from there.
Bishop e5 is likely what, well, I don't know. Bishop e5 stops me from developing this bishop because I would lose g7. So maybe he can do that, trying to provoke me into playing f6 and weakening my king. But I'm thinking of bishop e5, maybe I'll play a5 and then perhaps have bishop a6 sort of plans, but it's probably not going to bother him too much because he'll go knight e2 and castle king side. Yeah, bishop e5, I might have to play f6 sooner or later. Maybe sooner rather than later. Bishop e5, f6, bishop g3. Bishop d6. Is it all that bad? Hmm. I'm actually not even certain I should be trading the dark square bishops because technically uh, this bishop's still a bad bishop. And if I trade the dark square bishops, then automatically my c5 square is weakened. If he can direct his knight there in the middle game, that will be a nice plan for him. Like let's say knight e2 to, to c1 to d3 and then to c5. So it's possible I should just try to keep my dark square bishop back in hopes of uh, maybe achieving the c5 pawn break with the support of the bishop. So let's say he were to play bishop e5, f6, bishop g3. Maybe I just play bishop e7 there. Um, I hope my pawn on e6 doesn't become too weak. But continuing that line, maybe he'll go knight e2. We both castle. And then I can play like a5 or maybe rook c8 and try to get c5 in. So he does play the expected move. Yeah, I just, I, I don't really have a good way to defend this this G pawn. I'm not gonna play queen G5 or something. Um, and I can't develop because he takes on G7, so I think I kind of have to do this. And he does go back, and I think I should retain the dark square bishops. I, su I shouldn't insist on a trade immediately. Yeah. He can play e4, but that blocks his light square bishop, and I'll go knight b6 against that. So, I think I have good chances to complete my development, at least, without major issue. I'm expecting knight e2 here. Catching up a little bit on the clock. Um, I have a feeling this one is going to be coming down to the wire. Just a hunch. So, knight e2, I castle, he castles. What will I want to play there? I'd probably lean towards rook c8. Because I don't think I really need a5. Uh, my b pawn is well protected as it is. Um, and there's no chance of him really playing a5 with my queen eyeing in that square. So... A5 may be of limited use. The only reason to play A5 in my mind would be to arrange bishop A6. But to do that, I probably need C6 protected anyways. So assuming knight E2, castles, castles is played, I think I'll play rook C8 in that resulting position. Um, if castles, I wonder if he can go knight F4. Um, I take E6 is kind of weak. Well, it's a minor concern, and I don't... It's not worth spending a lot of time thinking about that, so. Okay, he plays e4, so I was assuming I would play knight b6 against this move. And I still think I will, because knight c7 doesn't look good as an alternative. So, yeah, let's do this. Kick his rook back. He'll play rook c1. Um, is c5 anything? c5, let's say, uh, pawn takes, queen takes d1. If you were to take with a rook, that would be great, because I could play bishop takes c5. Um, however, he can take with a king. And if knight takes here, then c6 could be a bother. I think it could be. Uh, c5 would be a nice move to get in. I really want to play that move. He might be trying to play a5, 
as well here. Um, or knight f4. Because knight f4, and this, this pawn is really weak now. Um, knight f4 and queen b3 are simple ways he could attack it. So, yeah, I don't... Hmm. It might be time to make a move like c5. I'm not sure how wise it is. Um, that line's critical. Like c5, uh, pawn takes c5, queen takes d1 check, king takes, knight takes a4, c6. Let's say I were to play um, bishop c8 then. I mean, that pawn is super strong. But I could see myself getting some counterplay there. I really could. I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, it, I'm just not thrilled about my position if I can't break with c5 like immediately here or on the next move. And even the next move was probably pushing it. So we'll just break right now and see what happens. So crucial line, pawn takes c5, queen takes d1 check, king takes d1, uh, knight takes a4, c6. I could take on b2 with check, but he has king c2. Um, bishop takes c6, king takes b2. And in that resulting position, I only have two pawns for the piece. And my a and b pawns, which are the pawns that I would be up, I don't think are dangerous enough. So I'm looking at having to play um, that line with bishop c8 towards the end. And he has that massive trump in the c6 pawn. But uh, I think I can throw a lot of roadblocks in his way. And I hope that one of these bishops at least will stay out of the game. Like, if he captures on c5 later on, I hope to be able to play e5 and maybe shut this bishop out. The dark square bishop. I haven't even really considered too many alternatives to him taking on c5 because I don't think anything else looks as crucial as that. Um, I mean, maybe a move like just castles or... Uh, a5 or something. I mean, a5, I have knight d7, but I wonder if he could just play queen b3 then and just go after my um, e6 pawn. It's possible he could do that. That might be a good line. a5, knight d7, queen b3. Because how do I defend e6? King f7. <laughs> I'm not going to play that. Uh, he would have knight f4 anyways. Um, I'd, I'd have to sack that pawn, more than likely. Like rook f7, queen takes e6, knight f8. Maybe I can go after his a5 pawn? Eh, I don't know. Probably not. Maybe d4 is weak, though? If he were to play queen b3 immediately, I have c4. So... If he's going to do anything with queen b3, he's going to throw in a5 first. Okay, he surprised me. He actually played knight f4. was not expecting that. Um, I saw that that move was possible. I just didn't think he would weaken his control over d4 by doing it. So if queen takes d4, um, let's say we swap queens. He takes on e6. That's got to be good for him. Yeah, I would think that's a pretty strong line for him. Uh, meanwhile, how do I deal with this problem? Of knight takes e6. Queen d7 is ugly in view of a5. And I've taken away the natural square from my knight. Um, hmm. I mean, I, I might have to take on d4 and like sack something. Or just let his knight come in, basically. Because how else to play the position? How else do we do it? Oh, his rook can come down to c7, though. Oh, no, that's that's bad. That's very bad. Hmm. Yeah, this, this position is no good. Knight f4 is a good move. Um, I'm looking for some sort of practical chance I might have here. Like bishop c8. Is bishop c8 like the only move? Ugh, ugly, ugly. Bishop c8, he has a5. That's also bad. Qu 
Queen c8 is kind of out of the question. He can just take Queen c8, take, Bishop takes. It's not yet losing, <laughs> but it's on its way. Um, also, Queen c8, a5. This a5 move is like really bothering me in so many lines. Queen d7, a5. Okay, I'm going to play queen d7. And I'm hoping that if a5, knight a4, at least provides me some counterplay. I'm seeing there's a couple ways he can dispute that. Like um, a5, knight a4, he probably has knight takes e6 if he wants. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not, actually. Uh, if that were to happen, queen takes e6, e6, queen takes a4. I do have bishop takes e4. Still, though, something is like not right for me in this position. Um, actually, can he take on c5? And then if I take on d1, maybe now he takes with a bishop. Oh, yeah, that, that's very bad for me. Bishop takes d1. Because I can't play knight takes a4 then. So where does my knight go? It would have to go to d7 or c8, both of which are met by c6. And he's winning my bishop. Yeah, D takes C5 like wins material for him. Yeah, that won't be good if he plays that. Because I have to take on D1. Um, he's attacking my knight and attacking my queen. My knight is defending my queen, so... Um, could I maybe play E5 in this position? I mean, that would just be a pure counterattack on his knight. If e5, knight d5, I think I can pretty much resign. Yeah, that's it's not it's not possible to escape that. Okay, so Check. I'll take d1. Bishop takes is very good though. That's the problem. Yeah, and he played it instantly. Uh, what about rook f c8 here? Is that okay? I am pinning his rook on c1. Okay, maybe I maybe I'm still breathing. I probably want to use the F rook too, huh? We can take on e6. I'm on life support, but it's not over yet. <laughs> no, I think knight takes c7 is pretty darn good though. Knight takes c7, knight d7, knight c7. Um, yeah, I'd have to sack the exchange there. All right, I'm just going to be playing um, playing for the clock, basically, at this point, trying to mix it up. Um, objectively, my position is losing, so I have to start looking towards the time to try to claw back in the game in this one. Bishop there, yeah, it's a pretty good move too. I think I have to take with the rook on c5, right? Oh, but he's going to take with his rook, bishop takes, and then bishop takes e6, threatening all sorts of discoveries. Yeah, this is pretty much over. He is still pinned here, but um, does that help me much? Probably not. Okay, just go king h8. Got to do something. If bishop takes e6, I can take with a rook on e5. However, knight takes e5 is strong. Or knight takes e6, I think, is good here. It's very strong. Bishop takes e4, knight c7. I'm looking at that line again. That would just likely be losing for me. King e2, huh? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, once again, I am most certainly losing in this position. Down a pawn. Bad minor pieces. I am threatening e4. I think f3 would just be a good move for him, though. Hold everything. 
Uh, maybe if f3 I can play a5 and try to get my bishop to a6. Again, there's some life, there's some hope, but uh, it's uh, the light is burning out rapidly. He doesn't exactly seem slow either. Like he's playing some rapid fire moves in here as well. Does seem a little bit hesitant right now. Um, I gotta go knight d7, right? No choice. Threats, threats everywhere. Uh, knight c5? Okay. Pre-move that. I think just him playing f3 somewhere is highly unpleasant for me. Like right now. Decides not to do it. Um, yeah, I gotta take. I'm headed for a losing endgame. Took the pawn. Yeah, that's a good point. I can't really stop that pawn. Check. Let's give a check. See where this takes us. Yeah, this is this is over. I feel like I've said that a bunch of times. <laughs> but it's really getting close to being over. I'll try bishop e7, just so if d6, maybe I can go bishop d8, but rook e1 takes care of business here. Along with some other stuff, too. Um, wait, did he just hang his bishop? Okay. <laughs> That's really weird. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm getting a new lease on life at the moment. I totally wasn't expecting that. Um, what do I do here? I gotta go here now, huh? Oh no, okay, I'm losing. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, yeah, one of his pawns is gonna queen. He was um, he was winning though. I for some reason bishop a five really it's weird. Huh. I wonder if he just for some reason just totally messed up. Um, I guess I should have played rook a eight in this position, and then brought the bishop back to d eight. Still though, his king is like pretty close. Um, anyways, okay, I'm just kind of confused by what happened at the end there. Um, so bishop f4, don't really think it's a good move. I, I think I've looked at this move at some point, but it was ages ago, and uh, I just, you know, in general, if they play a weird move on move 3 and the c4 pawn's unprotected, it's it stands to reason black can take on c4 and try to hold on to it. Uh, so e3, b5, knight c3, bishop b7, and then a4. Um, I played a6, and he played bishop e2. Yeah, so I had I had a little struggle here trying to find the best move. Spent, what, about two and a half minutes or so trying to decide. I'm just going to get the engine's opinion. Because this bishop's coming to f3. This is how he's going to develop his position. Doesn't like knight d7. Just prefers e6 or knight f6. And then maybe even giving the pawn back. So a line the engine gives is knight f6, bishop f3. Um, it was saying e6 for a moment. And then a takes b5, uh, a takes b5. Rook takes a8? Yeah, I guess rook takes a8 It's okay here. What about just knight takes? c takes, bishop takes, bishop b4 check. check. Okay. Yeah. Get him to move the king. Let's say king e2. And then trade and probably castle, I assume. Okay, so maybe there are some lines where uh, black can give up the bishop, like on b7, in order to free himself and castle. Um, okay, so here, knight d7, bishop f3, b4. Yeah, this idea might not be so successful, huh? Knight gf6. Check. He instantly took. I took with a knight. 
You know, G takes F6 did cross my mind for a second, like trying to prepare E5. In hindsight, this might be a better chance. But nonetheless, it appears he's going to win back his pawn with a pretty coherent position. So yeah, I think knight e7 was a clear mistake for me. I don't like that move at all. The engine thinks maybe I can cower with queen c8 and try to defend all my weaknesses. But yeah, if I could do it over again, I would not play knight d7. Check. Okay, so knight takes f6. He played rook c1, e6. Um, he took on c4. I played knight d5. He went bishop e5. Yeah, so bishop e5 makes it hard for me to develop my position. And then f6. I speculated that I might have to play f6 at some point anyways, because you know, I can't develop normally without dropping the g7 pawn with bishop e7, just allowing him to take. Sometimes that might be an option. Like if his bishop were on e2 or d3 or something, that might be an option to play after bishop takes g7, rook g8, and go after his g2 pawn, but not in this case. Yeah, I'm just quite a bit worse. e4. Knight b6, rook c1. Um, yeah, I didn't like my position one bit at all here. I mean, I'm, I'm really on the verge of just collapse at this point. Computer gives f5 is the best move. Ugh. <laughs> it pains me to even have to make this move in analysis. f5. <laughs> oh, it looks so ugly. Why would f5 be a good move? I guess just trying to fight for control of the d5 square so I can add some stability, like get my knight back to that square. But e6 becomes noticeably weak, knight f4. Um, so I played c5, but he did knight f4. Yeah, d takes c5, Check. queen takes d1, bishop takes d1. Rook fc8, I had the best... This is about the best I could do. King h8. Um... King e2. Yeah. Knight takes e6. Bishop back. You know, it's a little suspicious because I'm just watching. The reason I've kept the engine on for most of this game is I'm really curious, like, how often he matches the engine. And I know I, my position was um, not good for the vast majority of this game, but he's literally been matching the engine, like, every single move. <laughs> Uh, so this guy's either like Check. a really strong player or he's um, he's cheating. So the only thing that uh, really confuses me is this bishop a5 move at the end. Like, what was that? Like, suddenly he just randomly played that move. Yeah, like if he had gone here and then just like rook e1, I was going to resign. Um, I was also going to resign if he had played in this position, rook e1. So... What was that about? Bishop a5. I mean, he's played, like, flawless the entire game, and then suddenly just hangs a bishop. Um, here, let's see if he played the correct moves after this. Maybe here the, the moves themselves are not that hard to find. But, yep, he's back to playing the perfect moves, and now I'm losing. Yeah, it took too long to uh, try to get my king over here. I guess I had to play um, in this position. Well, I thought rook a8. Um, oh, but he can even play rook e6, okay, and come to e8. Ouch. That's really funny that he can hang a whole bishop here, and I'm not even better. <laughs> and Black's only only has to deal with the d-pawn, but that d-pawn is so strong and my king is so far away. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I run into this sometimes with videos, and fortunately I haven't had to, like, deal with this too much. But, like, I... There's a good chance this guy's cheating, and the account is brand new, too. Like, let's just, I'll show you guys his history again. Whoops, that's my history. Um, it's brand new, and he's won all four of his games, and there was a high degree of engine matching Check. in that game. I'm using, stock, like, a weaker version of Stockfish right here, but, like, is there a move that he didn't match the engine on? It should be E5. Knight e2, e4. Every move was, like, very purposeful, too. Like, I, I felt under constant pressure this game. Not that that means anything. You know, that's just how I felt during the game. That's not 
empirical evidence Check. of him cheating. But yeah, like every move was really, really good. Time usage. He did spend some time on certain moves, like this one he spent some time on, knight f4. I mean, it's possible Check. this is just a good player who's untitled, but like played every move very, very strong. Um, exactly textbook how you'd want to convert this position. He even moves like bishop c7 here, completely tying me down. Um, yeah, and I'm busted at this point. Bishop d5 even. Yeah, I, I was suggesting, like, he throw an f3 somewhere. Like, if it were me, I probably would have played f3, like, right around here even, um, after bishop f8, just like a move like this. Whoops. f3. Because then this bishop's, like, always biting on granite. Um. No, actually, okay, so now I see the engine likes f3. What did he do? Bishop c7. I'd also like that move. Hmm. Very Check. tough to say. I mean, I I am not going to accuse him of cheating based on one game, but, you know, it looks suspicious. What can you say? And I don't want it to sound like sour grapes, but uh, <laughs> when you look at chess like all day, every day, and you see how people play and relative strengths of players, like this, it just seems a little suspicious. And the, the one bishop a5 move was, like, really random. You can see he made that move, like, instantly, too. Just bishop a5. I don't get it. <laughs> so, other than that, every move was uh, a winner. So, okay, well, if you have any questions about this game or feedback especially, um, you know, I suspect this one might garner some uh, good feedback about people who are knowledgeable um as it pertains to computer chess or people matching moves or whatnot uh, it's an interesting question so well just for fun before i wrap up this video let's check his other um I keep doing my history let's check his other game so secret mc is his name secret mc let's just see for the fun of it what his other 15 minute game look like with the engine on so he's black in this one, playing Doctor Who, a 2060. This is a theoretical line. And you know, it's very possible that it might become apparent that he's not cheating um, once he's played more games, but... Okay, not a whole lot has happened so far. This is a pretty boring line. Black seems to be doing very well. It's kind of this like hanging pawn on a2. It's just uh, just there. <laughs> Takes it. Okay, let's see this move. Yeah, in my opinion, a move like queen d2, if he were to play that move in this position, would be a little suspicious. Is that that's not an obvious move to me. I don't I couldn't tell you if I saw Queen D two here, like why that would be a good move in this position. It might take me a while to figure that out. Yeah, and he played it. Um hmm. How fast did he play that too? Wow. Thirteen okay. Thirteen thirty two and it took him two seconds to play Queen D two. Why is I don't get why Queen D two is a good move. White's not really threatening anything here, is he? Um Note that black cannot take on b3, because after the queen takes, there's this bishop h7 trick. So how do you play queen d2 in two seconds, and it's a good move? I, I don't get that move. The engine gets it. <laughs> I don't get it. Bishop e6. Rook c3. Yeah, it's, it's just engine match. This one, rook e8, you know. Check. It's it's move after move after move. Very quick. He's used, wow, he's used less than three minutes. Two minutes and 15 seconds to get to move 31, and he's got this massive advantage. This guy's used a healthy amount of time, two-thirds of his time. <sighs> yeah. I mean, you got you guys see the moves compared to the engine. It's It's literally every move. Yeah, now it's it's over. 
resign. Okay, uh, just let's just check. <laughs> this game probably not going to reveal much. Looks like. Okay, Black hung their queen. These are blitz games, so it's not going to be. Not going to be as revealing. Um, just real quick though. Bishop e6. Very quick play. Queen g5. One second <laughs> to play the um, attack on the knight. That happens to be good because if bishop takes e4, he does take and he pins the bishop to the king. Yeah, now black's totally winning. Queen f5. Again, every move is best. Wow. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm pretty certain this guy's a cheater. Uh, I'm just going to call it. <laughs> uh, I'm still going to post this game because I think it was interesting. And, um, you know, even though it might have been someone using assistance, I, I, there's still something to be learned from that. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you, if you have any feedback or comments about this game, feel free to post it. And I'll be back tomorrow with another standard game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.